A Toastmaster, Tim Taylor, is going to give us some sobering facts about the world of cybersecurity in 2023. Now, we all know that Tim owns an IT and cybersecurity company and has behind the scenes knowledge of what's happening today. Tim's company helps over 100 organizations in several states prevent their information from being stolen by computer hackers. So let us welcome Toastmaster Tim the Toolman Taylor <laughs> with his speech entitled, Do You Think Your Information Is Safe? Wow. Good morning, Toastmasters. Good morning. Good morning. Let me give you a number. 560,000 a day. Wow. That's how many new computer viruses come out on the internet every single day. Let me give you another number. 150 billion. That's how many spam email messages are sent every single day. That's 45% of all email sent in the world today is spam. The world's population is 8 billion. 6 billion of that is adults. And 4.37 billion of them have email addresses. And let's just say the spam filters catch 75% of all spam messages that go out. That means 4.37 billion messages are still delivered every day. I'm sorry, it's 37.5 billion are still delivered every day. That means that nine spam messages arrive in every email box in the world every day. Now that doesn't sound like a lot until you think about this. Let's say it takes one second to delete a spam message. That's 37.5 billion seconds of lost productivity every day. That equals 437, 434 million, 434,000 lost productivity days per day. That comes up to 1,189 years of lost productivity every day, just from spam messages. And that's assuming you only take one second to delete each one. Who's heard of ransomware? Okay. 90% of all ransomware is delivered by spam email. You get an email, you don't know what it is, there's an attachment, you click on it, it infects your computer, it starts encrypting all the documents on your computer. If you're on a network, it starts crawling through the network and encrypts all the documents on your network. Suddenly your entire company cannot function. And a little message shows up from a hacker that says, oh, we're really sorry this happened to you, but if you would like to get, they actually say that, we're really sorry this happened to you, but if you would like to get your information back, send an email to this to this address or call this 800 number. They actually have tech support that helps you pay ransomware in bitcoins. The people that are answering the phone actually think they're helping people. <laughs> Who's heard of the Colonial Pipeline incident? Remember that? They shut down the Colonial Pipeline. That affected 38% of all the population of the United States because it stopped, because oil stopped flowing. That's just productivity loss. In 2011, 2017, $5 billion was paid in ransom. By 2019, that was $20 billion. This year, it's expected to top $50 billion in ransomware payments. You know what the funny thing is, is ransomware is actually not the most profitable thing that hackers do. Who knows what BEC is? It's called business email compromise. Let's say you work in a big company, and the president of the company has to remember his email password, one of the few things he has to remember. He doesn't want to remember multiple passwords, so he puts that same password everywhere. His business has good security, but he sets up an account at Home Depot, and he makes his password his mother's birthday. Whatever, whatever he uses for his password, that's what he puts at Home Depot. Home Depot gets hacked. Now what do they have? They have his email address and they have his password. So they get into his email in the office 
and then they will he the hacker will then send an email to the accounts payable department and it says hey we need this fifty thousand dollar bill paid today wire transfer the money right now well it came from the president of the company there's his email address I'm supposed to do this so what does she do she sends the money and it goes overseas and you cannot get it back that has actually happened to a couple of my clients that is one thing that your IT people cannot stop you've heard it's hard to legislate stupidity that's exactly the same thing we tell people all the time do not do this and they can do it anyway that is one thing again we cannot stop well, let me give you a little bit of good news. You can prevent this. If you own a company or you even work in a company, encourage them to get a cybersecurity audit. An, a cybersecurity company will come in and audit all of their systems and tell them where their flaws are. Please be careful when you click on things and train your employees or your coworkers not to click on just everything. Make sure there's a good backup system on your network. So if you get ransomware at four in the afternoon, the backup could put you back the way you were at 3 in the afternoon right before it happened, not the way you was when you came in this morning. You would lose all the things you had done that day. That can cost millions of dollars in a good-sized company. And please do not use the same password everywhere. I just told you why you don't want to do that. The average American has to remember 80 passwords. That's a lot, isn't it? Do I use the same password everywhere? No. Do I use the same word password in a lot of places? Yes because there's so many to remember. And I only use those in places that I don't care. I have a dummy Yahoo account. I use a, you know, a password on there. I don't care if anybody gets into that account. I really don't care. But I will never do anything business-wise with it. And lastly, please work with an IT company that actually knows what they're doing. I happen to know one if you want to talk to me after the meeting. <laughs> OK, let's lighten things up a little bit. You know, Carlos can back me up here. In the Spanish language, everything that's an inanimate object is either male or female, right? My car, she, si. you know, see, si, see, si, my car, okay. So in my office, we were trying to determine, are computers really male or are they female? Which one are they? All the men in my office said, no, computers have to be female. And there's four reasons why computers are females. Number one, only their creator understands their internal logic. <laughs> Number two, the language they use to communicate with each other is incomprehensible to anyone but their creator. The third reason why computers have to be female, even the smallest mistakes are kept in long-term storage for later retrieval. <laughs> and the fourth reason why computers have to be female, as soon as you commit to one, you have to spend all this money on accessories. Okay, ladies. Well, the ladies in my office said, no, 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 computers have to be male. Here's four reasons. First of all, in order to get them to do anything, you have to turn them on. <laughs> They're supposed to solve your problem, but they usually are the problem. And the last reason, as soon as you commit to one, you realize if you'd waited just a little bit longer, you could have got a better model. <laughs> And you thought it was going to be a serious speech about something. <laughs>